so today we are uh, starting part B, cost reporting. Um, as we already know, that whenever we are we are producing any product, so to produce any product at the end of production, we are always interested to calculate the product cost. The formula of product cost is we need to estimate the direct material that we use on the product plus the direct labor that work on the product mm -hmm. and plus the manufacturing overheads. Sometimes we can also include direct expenses as well. And the total, we will get the product cost. Now this part basically will help us to understand all the techniques which are necessary to manage our raw materials. When we talk about direct materials, these are the material that we use directly on a product. But don't forget that in manufacturing overheads, we also have indirect materials as well, which we are not using directly on a product, but still are necessary to complete the production process. So how we can manage our direct material and indirect material, this we will be discussing in chapter number seven. Then how to manage your labor, that will be our topic in chapter eight. And chapter nine onwards, we will be talking about the management of overheads. When we talk about the overheads, so how we treat the overheads, there are two costing principle. One is called absorption costing and second is called marginal costing. For external reporting, we always use absorption costing. For internal planning, controlling, and decision making, or any information that we want to provide to managers, we use marginal costing and so on. So, all these things we will be covering in the next three chapters and so. Clear with this part? Yes, sir. Okay. Then, chapter seven. In chapter seven, we will be talking about materials. When we say materials, basically, we are referring to our especially if we are talking about a manufacturing organization. So in manufacturing organization, material refers to inventory. And when we are saying inventory, so there are three different type, types of inventory. First is raw material. Second is work in progress. And third is finished good. What is raw material? For example, if we want to make uh, markers, for example. So to produce markers, what we need basically, we need raw plastic or plastic sheets. For wrapping up or for packaging, we also need different sort of plastic sheets so we can wrap up our product. After that, further, we need bucket of inks, we need nibs and so on. So all these are what these are the raw material. We will take all this raw material and we will input in the production department. And in production department, then we will going to convert our raw material into finished good. So when our inventory is in the production department, inside the production department. So that inventory will be considered as work in progress. That this is the inventory that currently we are working on it. And at the end, when we complete our production process, we will get completed units or which we called finished good. Finished goods are such units which are ready to sell to customers. So we have completed our production into that. And now these are good to sell to the customers. So basically when we talk about manufacturing organizations, we have three types of inventory, raw material, the first inventory that we are buying, putting that raw material into production department, work in progress. And once we are going to complete our production, then the finished goods. And finished good is the inventory that we are going to sell to our customers. 
if we talk about uh, a retail business, for example, what is retail business? Business that they will be buying the finished good and they will be selling the same finished good to the customer and they're going to add some profit margin to that. So such kind of business are called retail business and they will only be having finished goods. They will not be having any raw material or work in progress. And they will only be having one type of inventory, finished good inventory. Uh, sometimes it's also referred to as merchandisers or merchandise inventory. So merchandise inventory is the same inventory for a retail business, which we call finished good. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. Okay. Now the topic list, first of all, types of material I already explained. Then buying material, what is the process? Uh, the same in MA1, we studied purchase cycle the same purchase cycle we will going to review. Then how to value material uh, whenever we are going to issue any materials, how to do costing of that. Basically, there are three methods for that, LIFO, FIFO, and AFCO. So these three methods we can use for our inventory valuation. After that, inventory control and inventory levels. Now, this is a new topic for you at the stage of MA2, and this is the topic of inventory management. That how to, how, what are the different ways that we can use to manage our inventory um, in our storeroom? So, and there are different or certain levels that we need to draw so we can effectively manage our inventory. So that how to conduct an inventory control, what are the inventory levels that we are going to see in the portion of inventory management. And then computers, sometimes we also use computers to record and control and process our inventory because inventory is such an item that on a daily basis might be we are buying it and we are selling it. So there's, there will be so much in and out um, uh, because of the inventory. So it's better as the volume of transactions will be higher in the inventory department. So it's better to use computers and the coding systems. So you can better manage your inventory. Clear with this topic list? Yes, sir. Okay. Now types of material, first is raw material, second is work in progress, and third is finished good. All these three type of inventory will be for a manufacturing organization. So if we are having a manufacturing organization, we will be holding all these three type of inventories. Classification of materials, materials can be direct material or indirect material. Direct material is any material that we use directly on our product. If I'm making iPhone and if I use steel to produce that iPhone, so steel is what direct material. Then indirect material is any material that we never use it on a product, but still it's necessary to complete the production process. For example, lubricants for a machinery. Now lubricants, we will not be using directly on a product, but lubricants we will using on the machine and then machine will be working on the product. So that lubricants of a machinery can be considered as indirect material. Direct material will be charged directly to the work in progress and then it will go to the finished good. Mm -hmm. Indirect material, First, it will go to the production overhead account. After that, it will move to the WIP and ultimately it will become the part of finished good. And when we will actually going to sell our finished good, then we charge the cost of these finished good to cost of goods sold. And cost of goods sold is what? It's a expense in our profit and loss. Clear with this thing? Yes, sir. 